Welcome back. This video continues our exploration of port cities. This time you will learn how ports, waterfronts and port cities changed after the 1960s, as containerization triggered a wholesale restructuring of shipping networks, trade patterns, port facilities, port city hierarchies and urban form. From the late 1960s to the late 1970s, ship sizes increased, with container, oil and bulk carriers passing the previous upper limit of 50,000 tons gross and requiring deeper waterways and harbors. As few ports were able to handle these new huge ships, city governments, port authorities and shipping companies around the world developed new terminals on the outskirts of cities where deeper water was available. Among the European ports, Rotterdam was one of the first to receive a container ship in 1966. The city has regularly updated its port, extending its range from the inner city towards the sea in the west. Excellent connections by rail and barge to the large inland river container terminal in Duisburg, Germany, further spurred the growth of the Rotterdam port. Today, the leading container ports are located in the Middle East and Asia. The huge ships that dock there travel to and from Europe and America. New ports have emerged in China, where many goods originate and where leaders have fostered the growth of ports since the 1970s. Larger ships require deeper waterways and ports that are built into the sea. Deep water ports are defined as ports that can accommodate the largest ships that can cross the Panama Canal's locks, the so-called Panamax ships. With the recent expansion, the Panama Canal can accommodate even bigger ships. Many ports around the world will also have to adapt or relocate in order to host the new so-called Super Panamax ships. Discussion of port expansions are already underway in port cities on the American East Coast, including Savannah, Georgia. Global trade is visible in the huge number of containers circling the Earth on these ships. The World Bank counted a little over 651 million transshipments of 20-foot container units in 2013. It is also visible in the enormous amounts of oil that ships carry from producers to consumers. Turnaround time, the time a ship needs to unload and reload, is a major factor in the success of a port. Another major factor is adaptability how quickly and how well ports and their neighboring cities can adapt to the technological, political, economic, social and other changes. Several organizations rank ports on the base of these measures. As ports expand, shrink, move or require infrastructure, they compete with other functions of their host cities. The timeliness of urban redevelopment thus also counts in port rankings. As public and private decision makers around the world build new ports and facilities for the bigger ships, transshipping more and more goods and people after the 1960s, they abandoned their old harbors. Waterfronts in New York, Hamburg, Amsterdam, Philadelphia or Sydney lost their status as global ports. They became ghost districts, challenges to urban development. Many cities looked for new uses for empty inner city ports, filled with industrial structures and industrial waste along polluted waters, these sites needed major investment for redevelopment. Cities also needed to find employment for the many people who had lost their jobs in packaging, transportation and storage. Waterfront redevelopment in some places focused on preserving traditional port infrastructure and recovering the water for locals. Baltimore chose to redevelop the waterfront for leisure and tourism. 
a project that was then exported to other port cities around the world. The London Docklands controversially redeveloped an industrial waterfront into office spaces and riverside housing for young urban professionals. Rotterdam redeveloped abandoned port land in the Cope van Zuid area. Meanwhile, Amsterdam built housing and preserved large warehouses in their respective former port areas. Other port cities redesigned their waterfronts on the occasion of cultural or sporting events, as the in case of Qindao chose. Under the slogan, the growing city, the city of Hamburg has aimed to counter shrinkage. It opted to transform the former inner city port area, including the historic Speicherstadt, into a multifunctional district, the Hafen City. Establishing a master plan for an area of about 155 hectares, the city started in the 1990s to undertake what is one of the largest redevelopment projects in Europe. After the fall of the wall, the city bought up land and held a competition, won by a Dutch-German team called Hamburg Plan with Kees Christians and Astok. The western part of the area, such as the Zandtürkei, is almost finished, with some 1,500 people living and some 6,000 working there. The Hafen City redevelopment aims to create an integrated urban development with housing, offices, shops, schools, and cultural amenities, and has held numerous architectural and urban competitions, including for the public space. The redevelopment includes several so-called lighthouse projects, architectural objects by famous designers, including the Elbphilharmonie by Herzog and de Meuron, here seen in the background. The Hafen city area offers views over the working port and attracts locals and foreigners who occupy the coffee shops, restaurants, and public spaces. The broad Elbe River provides a safe distance from noise and other nuisances of the port. The Hafen city is in walking distance from the inner city cruise terminal, boosting shops and restaurants in the newly redeveloped area. Vancouver and Boston are other examples of cities reclaiming old ports for new purposes, as are Portland and Miami, or Seattle and Sydney and Melbourne, Australia, each with their local particularities. Countries in the Middle East are imagining and building entirely new waterfronts with upscale housing, tourist attractions, and culture and leisure activities. They reclaim land from the water specifically for this purpose, as here in the Pearl in Qatar. And here, new waterfronts in Saudi Arabia and Manama, and the Palm Island in Dubai, or the waterfront in Abu Dhabi, both in the United Arab Emirates. The Marina Bay was developed in Singapore on reclaimed land. Similar land reclamation projects in Kobe, Japan, and other cities provided spaces for new developments, including housing and a multitude of business, commercial, and cultural functions. Occasionally, cities have built parks on new waterfront areas. Kasairinkai Koen is the largest park in central Tokyo, located close to Tokyo Disneyland. It is all reclaimed waterfront land. The area aims to recall the natural habitat of Tokyo Bay. The Tokyo Sea Life Aquarium here features aquatic habitats from Tokyo and also from around the world. Professional and local presses have often touted the revitalization of local waterfronts, the commodification of historical heritage, and the creation of new businesses. Occasionally, they raise questions about socioeconomic changes and social justice, or address environmental concerns. 
Only few developments, such as the wind energy project in Hamburg, highlight the need for sustainable development. Cities today improve their waterfronts not only to foster efficient and economic transport of goods in containers and in bulk on large ships, but also to bring people to new places, including newly revitalized waterfronts. Over the last decade, growing numbers of people have vacationed on cruise ships, taking advantage of water transportation and enjoying water as a background to their tourist experience. What started as a pastime for the wealthy in the early years of the 20th century developed in the 1980s into adventure for the middle and working classes. Cruise travel has developed into a form of mass tourism. In 2012, US American cruise ships carried some 17 million passengers on fully catered vacations and tours to exotic locations. These new cruise ships require extensive facilities on land and the number of terminals has grown rapidly in recent years. Waterfront regeneration, first promoted as a recuperation of the waterfront for locals, is now becoming an attraction for cruise ship tourists. Hamburg is particularly attractive for cruise ship companies. It hosts several terminals and tourists can step off the ship and enjoy the new Hafen City neighborhood. When the big ships dock in the heart of the city, they attract landside tourists. Cities cooperate with cruise companies and sponsor festivals focused on these ships, including the cruise days. But the impact of cruise ships on cities is highly contested. While some celebrate the economic benefits of tourism, others criticize this industry's use of environmentally disastrous fuels, heavy oil and unfiltered sulfurous gasoline. They also oppose what they term the invasive presence of these huge ships in historic cities, such as Venice. So far, despite the interconnectedness of ports and waterfronts, and the more recent connection of cruise ships and inner city ports, only a few organizations promote comprehensive planning of port and city. Local urban planners pay little attention to the different urban bodies of water, river, lakes, or the sea. Climate change may be the wake-up call that gets politicians, planners, and citizens alike to stop thinking about ports, waterfronts, and other water-related areas as disparate entities and to engage in collective responses. The challenges of global water rise, including increased migration, require ingenuity around the world. Port cities and urban waterfronts are at the forefront of these changes. Some ports try to position themselves as green, balancing economic and environmental challenges. Responsible innovation has become a theme at the Rotterdam port. Among other things, it gives price reductions to ships that have received the Green Award. To conclude, ports and port cities have adapted repeatedly over time to numerous challenges, often balancing economic needs and social interests, while also creating a local port culture that supports the needs and requests of the port. Port cities have demonstrated a resilience that may inspire other cities that need to adapt to the challenges of global climate change.